The other type of compound we've taken a look at writing formulas for is a molecular compound. The way we recognize a molecular compound is that the first element is going to be a nonmetal. In addition to that, the other visual clue we can take a look at is there are prefixes in the name. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Our first example, sulfur hexafluoride. Uh, we take a look at sulfur, go to the periodic table, and again we've got our stair-step line, and that stair-step line runs along here. Anything to the left is a metal. Anything to the right is a nonmetal. And we find sulfur right here. Sulfur clearly not a metal, so this is a molecular compound that we're looking at. In addition to that, here's a prefix. So what we're going to do is simply write down the symbol for sulfur. S. And we got that from the periodic table. We're going to look up the symbol for fluoride, which is F. Hexa. We need to know what hexa means. It's one of those prefixes. Um, those are located on our formula writing flow chart. They are right here. And hexa is right down here, meaning six. So what we're going to do is put a subscript six. Remember, these guys, these prefixes become the subscript. So we've got our formula SF6. Let's try another one, diphosphorus pentoxide. Not even going to go to the periodic table for this one because I can clearly see prefixes all over the place. I've got di here, I've got penta here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up phosphorus. You know that's a P. And I'm going to look up oxygen. You know that's an O. Di. Again, we're going back to our flow chart. Di is right here. That's 2. And then penta is right here. That's a 5. So it's P2O5. And we're done. Uh, much easier for molecular formula writing than it is for ionic. A few more steps for ionic. Just remember there's a difference between the two. We're looking at the first element in both cases. First element for ionic is metal. First element for not, uh, molecular is a nonmetal.